Man, back again. Yeah. You know, and I, and I don't even know if I'm able to even save these. I'm trying to. All right, so you good? I'm good. Okay, so we were talking about um, wood type and joinery. Yes, yeah, so, so you know, like in Windsor chairs, they're made of different woods because you want to use the properties of each of those woods to its best advantage, right? So you want the you want some nice solid piece for your legs and, and your turned parts, right? Because you get good crisp turnings, it'll be really strong, it'll, it'll, your joints will be strong. You, you like your seat to be something that's easily carvable. So pine, poplar, butternut, you know, I've done seats out of elm, you know, but they're, they're work. <laughs> yeah, elm, right? elm is very difficult to work with. You know, but it's a, it's a beautiful seat. And, um, you know, and then you're, Anything you need to bend, you need something that's going to bend real nice, right? So oak, hickory, um, ash to some extent, but really I prefer red or white oak. And same with all the spindles, I, and I ride them, right? So I'm, they're not cut out of a board, they're riven out of logs. So I've got a stack of logs in the yard that I, I pull from, and it's riven because I want dead straight grain going down the whole thing, right? And then I can get one piece of, uh, then I can get one piece of wood for the whole thing. You know, um, you know, so, so you got the oaks, but you can get really thin, thin, thin pieces, you know, coming in with those because of the nature of the wood. You wouldn't be able to get, you know, a, a spindle that's five sixteenths in diameter with maple and have it expected to hold up. It just won't, right? You know, the ladder backs, you can, it's a little bit different. You can use all the same species for, for pretty much most of the parts, as we said, and you can bend them. And so we bend cherry, walnut, ash, Oak, we bend all those all the time, you know, so and we get some pretty good, we get some pretty good bends out of them. So how, okay, during this process, how much time did you spend on turning to get good enough at it to do this? Uh, a long time. <laughs> you know, I took a turning class and the, the trouble with most turning classes, most people don't turn for spindles, right? They're turning bowls, right? So, so then it's a ton of videos. Uh, Pete Galbert's got a great video series out, you know, watching Curtis Buchanan on uh, some of his early YouTube stuff has all the turnings and then it's just practice. And, and I, I think a lot of the stuff, the same with, with, um, you know, you're using your hand tools. Once you figure out how to get your tool sharp, turning is a whole lot easier. <laughs> yes. You know, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. And I started getting into turning because I was buying chair parts, I was buying the legs and buying buying the parts. And the quality just wasn't there. You know, you couldn't get the details that you wanted, you couldn't get the styles you wanted, and the quality just wasn't there. And so that's when I started turning myself. And how about the chair, the, the bending of wood, the steam bending? Yep. How, how, how did that, where did that come in? Was that something that you first started doing or did you pick that up later? In the no, day? I started doing it for my very first class with Dunbar. You know, first thing he's, he's teaching is steam bending, you know, and, and, uh, and how to do it. So I've been steam bending for 20 years and, and it's, um, you know, it's not a hard thing to do. It's like anything. It's a little bit of art, you know, a lot of science, a little bit of art and uh, a little bit of muscle. And you can, it's amazing what you can, it's amazing what you can bend. What, what's the, do you, when you bend, do you only use the, the steam bender for chairs or do you use it for other parts of, of furniture now? I, I do it for other parts of furniture as well. So under structures of desks and tables, um, I said, I'm not doing a lot of other stuff outside of, uh, outside of chairs these days, but, um, yeah, but I've bent pieces for other, for other furniture parts, you know, okay. I think it's a nice, it's a nice added dimension. I've also, I mean, I did bent laminations, you know, back in the nineties when I had my shop in California, 
you know, so I bent wood then, but I didn't do any steam bending. It was all bent laminations. You right. melt everything down to a 16th or, you know, somewhere around there and you stack them up and bend them around the form. And I did a lot of that in, uh, when I was in California, it was, it was pretty popular in furniture then. Okay, cool. Where are you now in your chair making and where do you want to go? It's really, um, I want to be working on my own designs and, and really it's, I'm, I've kind of got this quest to see how light can I make a chair? You know, how, how simple can I make it? How light can I make it? How elegant can I make it? You know, um, I don't, you know, you look at a lot of these factory made chairs and they're, they're just all beef, you know, and they're, they're heavy and they're, they're not very elegant. And it's like, how do I make them elegant? How do I make them light? How do I still make them really strong and, um, and do that? So I've been working on a bunch of designs on the side and, and uh, I introduced the rocking chair last year that was, uh, that started along that, that, uh, that range. Okay. I'm trying to figure, let's, can we do a, a shop tour? A sure. Single? Okay. Yep. Yep. Right, let's, yeah, I came into the house so I because uh, I thought maybe I had a bad connection, but I have a good connection out in the shop. So we'll and it's, let's do it. And I live. Uh, well, we just finished a renovation in the house. So I'll actually show you a. Uh, yeah. So we had a new uh, uh, new chestnut beam floor that we put in. Wow. So um, when we tore up the floor in this place, all the the beams were half rotted. So I took the leftover ones and I milled them up for chestnut. So I had chestnut floor. So this is a Very chair nice. I built with uh, Jeff. Beautiful. Left with. So this is a, a Brian Boggs Bray a rocker, but I'll show you the bends that we get out of this, out of that cherry. Let me back up. So that's a continuous piece of wood that's been bent. Nice. Right. And then I've got a sack back I just finished. That's uh, that arm rail and that bow are both white oak that's bent. They're single pieces of wood. Wow. So all the spindles are white oak. The, the whole, everything above the seat is white oak. The seat's pine. And then the legs are all sugar maple. Okay. So let's go out to the shop. So there's another, uh, it's a Brian Box style chair. You can see the bend that we do. That one's made out of red oak. So I, I do have a tough commute to work. <laughs> What's in the garden? So this is the uh, this is the herb garden. So we've got sage and thyme and rosemary and uh, basil and kind of a lot of other stuff. We got flowers. No, no marijuana. No, no, that was my younger day. <laughs> so putting in new steps into the shop. So I do have a. Uh, a table saw room that's a mess but it's mostly slabs and i got to get ready for doing a bunch of bending later in the week so this is all getting ready for it we have lots of uh lots of uh, rounds so these are all these are all maple rounds so i get them in uh slabs nine quarter slabs and then uh round them and let them dry a little bit so they're not so because i get them my the trees are fresh when I get them. So they'll dry a little bit till they're ready. Uh, they'll still be air dried. And then uh, this is the main shop. So I've got a kiln. So here I have a bunch of uh, Windsor chair legs and I'm drying the tendons. Okay. So there's a little hole in there. They go in there and the, ten so the tendons are super dry. So those are all turned from uh, from maple. I got a bunch of turning blanks, you know. Now, do you have a kiln in there? Yeah, so this is, uh, what, what, what's that right now? It's uh, running at uh, 127 degrees. Yep. So it's a simple I... frame, you know, one inch thick foam core. Um, yeah, let's see if we can open it up. I don't think I have much in it right now. I just finished a couple big jobs. So a couple heat lamps, they're on a, 
you know, they're on a, a switch. So I keep it between 125 and 140 degrees. So how, how, how hot can you get it? It'll go up higher, but I don't think there's a need to, you know, it's, um, there's not a, there's not a need to, you know, so, so I say these are, uh, I do a bunch of shaker benches, the really big ones. So these are the top rungs and they're thick so that they, uh, they won't bend when people sit on them. So they're, I don't know if they're 27, 28 inches long, right? I've got some, uh, some arm posts for, uh, for a small child's uh, shaker piece, they're in here drying. So I said, we got the legs, we got the legs up top. I gotta remember to keep them in there. So, you know, basic stuff. I got a six inch joiner, it's an old Powermatic. I think I bought it 20 years ago. You know, little bench top planer. I've got, uh, you know, bending forms. So these are, uh, I'll pull one up. So this is for a uh, for a stool, the back post for a stool. So it got bent to that form. It's a little bit of spring back in it, but it's uh, I don't know if I hope, how we can set it down so you can actually see that it's curved. But there's a good there's a good size bend to it. Yeah. Yep. So they'll, they're in. I have a pair of uh, you know what's called a birdcage style Windsor. They're uh, I got two stools to make out of those, All right? We got drying forms. So these are legs, uh, looks like a set of walnuts, set of cherry legs that are all, that are all been steam bent and now they're just in a drying form. How, how long, after you steam bend them, how long does it take for them to dry? Um, I usually let them go two weeks in the shop and they're probably pretty good to work two to three weeks. If I need to, I have a room in the back that I can heat and I can, you probably get them done in a couple days. So they go in to the steamer, they're probably anywhere from, you know, 12 to 18% moisture content. And then they get steamed and they come out and they're, they're pretty wet. And then it'll be amazing how quick they actually dry. So, you know, we've got some prototype ladders that I've made you know, um, but the mainstay of my shop is probably this bandsaw, you know, it's a mini max Italian, you know, uh, I want to say it's, it runs off 220. I want to say it's a five horse. It's a workhorse. You know, I can do, uh, pretty much anything I want for it. It's, it's meant for resawing, you know, it's a, it's a workhorse, um, main bench, you know, get into a sharpening station. So that's just permanently set up all the time. So whenever I need to sharpen, it's, I'm not taking stuff out just to sharpen. Um, what, as I've seen all the extra pieces, what's the average size of your class? Three, maximum of three. And, and how, how many times a year, minus COVID? Uh, yeah, minus COVID. I try to teach uh, nine classes a year. And how long are the classes? They're a week, six to seven days. Okay. So it's a relaxed, fairly relaxed pace. So you can do it. And I remember taking classes, you know, where I've got like 20, 25 students in the class. And it's like, I mean, I didn't feel so bad because I had a ton of woodworking experience, but if you had no woodworking experience, you're not getting the one-on-one -on -one attention. Right. And, and part of my, part of my thoughts on teaching are that I want, my students to walk away and be able to build another chair. I want them to be able to, uh, uh, you know, go away and be able to, to, to do that and have some skills and having that one-on-one, -on -one I think is just really, really important. Right. And giving it back. So I, I have no plans on expanding it. I mean, if I could do four, yeah, I think that'd probably be a max for the amount of amount of attention that you can actually give somebody, you know, uh, with a teaching assistant, you could probably do six or eight maybe, but, I think getting past that, it, it just makes it really hard. You're just not, you're not getting the one-on-one -on -one attention. Like with the assistant, you need, the assistant needs to know as well, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, is that it for the shop tour? 
Well, we got a little bit more, you know. I've got some works in progress, right? I got to finish painting. It's a it's six beautiful. foot, six foot uh, sack back bench, um, and then I've got a child sack back. That's uh, the both of them just need some more coats of paint and a coat of oil on them. You know, um, you know, chop saw station. You know, my shave horse. I've got a bunch of shave horses in storage for students, so everybody has everybody has tools. And then my main lathe, which is the Laguna, you know, and I've got an extension on it. So I can do 44, 46 inch um, chair legs, you know, rear posts of chair legs on it. Okay. Yep. All right, cool. Dan, you know, and that's the shop. I've got a, I bought this place six years ago and um, it's real hard to find a, find a building with a barn. And, yeah, and, in the burbs, you got to go way out. Yeah, yeah. And so we, I didn't mind being way out. You know, we're, we're out in the country, you know. Had another bear walk through the property this morning. You know. What? That, that's not scary? <laughs> no, no, they don't like people. He was a big boy, too. So we've got, yeah, I got three sets of bears coming through pretty much on a daily basis right now. We're in a village, you know. So, I mean, it's like, we're, I'm not that far from a busy road. and, and uh, But there's a lot of but there's a lot of like water company property and other kinds of property that are really close by. It's a trophy trout stream, hundred, hundred yards from the, from the shop. So, you know, I say there's hiking trails, there's all that stuff here. And so this time of year, they're all looking for food. They come, they come screaming through. Do you, do you ever feed them or no? No, 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 at least not, not, not knowingly. Right. So uh, we keep the bird feeders up until the bears take them down. He's in. He's eating the bird feeders. <laughs> um, you know. And that that doesn't scare you. No, they don't. They, they don't eat people. You know, I'm not going to go up and pet them. <laughs> so I watch too many movies. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We don't have grizzlies here, you know. <laughs> they might set you back up in the. You know. Yeah, you know, in fact, in fact, they'll go out. You go out and yell at them, you know. And they'll generally move away. Wave your arms, yell at them. Let me get out of here. They'll like. They don't want any trouble. They just want. They just want some food. They just want to eat. Just want to eat. You know. Let them eat. Just don't do it here. <laughs> right. Right. Don't leave your trash out. Don't put your trash in the <laughs> truck. You know. Don't leave dog food out on the porch. You know. Be smart about it. Though they won't bother you. All right. I'm yeah, I I I'm I'm scared of bears. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, it's uh not a bad thing. Yeah. So you, you you want to keep your distance, you know. Especially if mama's got a couple of cubs with her, you don't want to go anywhere near that. Right. You know. Right. But right. Uh, you know, the other guys, they're just uh they'll let you know that they're around if they don't want you around, you know. Yeah. And, and um you know, Brisbane, the, the shop dog, you know, she doesn't like them around either. She'll chase them off and tree them. Okay, well, that's, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, and how, how big is your dog? She's not that big. She's, uh, here she is. Hey, that's Brisbane. a big dog. No, no, she's 50 pounds. She's ready to work. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Squirrels, squirrels, chipmunks, woodchucks. She, uh, you know, squirrels, chipmunks, wood chips, they're all game to her. Well, that's good. Does yeah. she ever catch any? Oh, yeah, all the time. She's got two squirrels this week. She treated a bear last week, two of them last week. Wow. Yeah, she goes right after them. Woodchucks, we don't have any woodchucks around anymore. Wow. She'll take them all out. So she's like a... Uh... And she lives inside or outside? Inside. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, she's she's a princess. So, in your chair making journey, is there any chair you have not been able to conquer? No. 
So everything you've ever wanted to make, you're, you're able to make it now. Yeah. All right. And, and when is your next class? Um, I've got one with a couple of local guys in the end of July. And I'm teaching at the Connecticut Valley School of Woodworking in August. And then pretty much the rest of my classes, I've canceled them all uh, earlier in the year. And um, have just been selective because of COVID. You know, so right. I had a class in right before, right as COVID was starting, I had a class. And then I haven't had a class since I've canceled four so far this year. And I've got a few more that have already been canceled. I just, you know, just put a hamper on, uh, put a hamper on business. Big time. Yeah. Big yeah. time. Well, I, I had, you know, a big thing was it's like, how do I, I've got a bunch of skills that I think are worthwhile that. I'd love to pass on to other people, right? I'm not a spring chicken anymore. So uh, how, do, how, do, how, do we, how do we get these hand skills into the masses, you know, and away from, you know, where everything's got to be done on a table saw jig, right? How do, you, how do you do that? And so I found that, you know, quite by accident that I love the teaching part and I love being able to see the, uh, uh, you know, people pick up skills, you know, and, and I've been really, really fortunate. I've had a lot of really young people come through, you know, so like in their 20s and like they want to make a career out of woodworking, right? And, and then go, in, go on and see them make, not necessarily the design that you worked on in class, but they take, you can see that those skills went into other things that they're making. And that's just really satisfying. Yeah, I was, I was talking to uh, Patrick um, at Benevolent Design. We, 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 we talked about him wanting to make chairs and I sent him over to Jeff. Yeah. And I'm like, this, this is in, and Patrick is in Virginia beach. I think he said Jeff is three hours away. Yeah. 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 At that, yeah. Jeff's up in Northwest Virginia, you know, out in uh, Stroudsburg, really nice little rural location. And uh, I say Jeff is just, uh, he's a great, he's a scholar of the craft, you know, and, and uh, you're just going to learn tons and tons from him. You know. Yeah, I, I was telling him he, that's the the probably the quickest way to to upgrade your products is yeah. to go take a class and learn. Which yeah. is the reason I wanted to do it. Yeah, um, I, I need to. I'm always asked about, do you make chairs? And if I was able to say yeah and show it, I could probably sell more chairs. Yeah. But that that hesitation, that pause, it. Yeah, it, 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 it passes the whole subject. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, you're, then you're setting whole, whole dining rooms, you know, and I get asked to make tables all the time. And it's just like, ah, I'm just not set up for it. I don't have the big sanders. I don't have the, I can do it. And I, you know, and I, I, I probably do one table a year, you know, for somebody because they're buying a set of chairs from me. It's, you know, if you're right. not buying chairs from me, I'm not going to even consider buying a table, making a table for you. Right, exactly. otherwise, otherwise, I will. <laughs> Right. And what do you, what do you source your wood from? Um, pretty much all local people. So I've got a local Sawyer. Um, they actually own a tree service business, and and um, you know, one of the one of the brothers owns a sawmill, right? So okay. so he's milling up the stuff, and when he gets stuff that I that he knows is straight, and I'm in need, you know, he's uh, we work out. He's not that far. There's uh, there's a big fairly big local sawmill called Hinman and Sons. And uh, they're a big commercial outfit, you know, and they, they sell box loads of lumber and stuff. Um, and I'll get stuff from them. I buy logs from them too, uh, when I need to. Uh, they've been great. And they're only 20 minutes away, you know, and then there's, there's a few other local wood people around, but they're, you know, if I want good kiln dried stuff, that's like a drop, 45 minutes, you know, for an hour to, uh, to get good kiln dried stuff. That's reasonable, you know. Okay. Slabs, slabs. I, I generally get local, or you know, because winter chairs are all riven. You know, I buy, I get logs. Right. So, have you? Do you find the guys that have the sawmills, or are they giving you good rates? Or are they trying to charge you market rate? Uh, depends. Some, some, um, and a lot of it depends on whether or not I'm getting it fresh off the mill or if they're storing it for a year. Right. 
So I've got a I've got a guy I bought a lot of wood from, and and uh, but I know it's been air dried for a year and a half under good conditions, you know, and and it means it's it's usable immediately for me, and and uh, that's generally a more premium price, you know. But the local guys where it's being cut and I'm throwing it onto a trailer and bringing it home, I'm getting it pretty cheap. Okay, you know, I'm get I'm getting it uh, I'm really getting it pretty pretty darn cheap. Well, you know? that's good. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and uh, well, it makes it easier, makes it worthwhile, you know, so. Exactly. All right. So, all right, my brother. It's hey. been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. You see, you just need to come up and make chairs. Yes. I, that's, I, that's why I put the deposit in. I'm, I'm, I, I got I to gotta make it work while I can get free to get up there. Yeah. You know, whenever you're ready, you know. Yeah, so I'll, I'll check the schedule and, and make it happen. Okay, that sounds good to me. So, all right, brother, thank you very much. And we, we do burn at 6 p.m. Yeah, burn's a good guy. So, I don't know if you've ever talked to him, but he's just a, another wealth of knowledge. He's just a fabulous chair maker, one of my, one of my idols, you know. So, love, yeah, that, that'll, yeah, we, we've burn. talked before yeah. about signal and time of day. Yeah. And I realized that in Australia, it's completely different, <laughs> complete opposite time zone. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Well, my, my wife's Australian. So uh, when we go to talk relatives out there, you know, it's uh, it's late at night or, you know, catching them early in the morning and, and stuff exactly. like that. Her, her family's not too far from Bern. And uh, so I've had the, had the good opportunity to be able to visit him when uh, cool. when we've been there visiting family, you know. So you'll have to give him, give him my best. And, uh, uh, you know. We'll do it. Yeah, he's, he's just a fabulous designer, you know, on top of a chair maker. Yep, yeah, great stuff. All right, my brother. Oh, good. Well, you do well. Enjoy. We appreciate your time. Thanks. All right, brother, have a good one. Cheers. Bye now. Thank you all for tuning in. Cheers.